peace treaty of Satmar brought a new compromise to the internal political life of Hungary. The balance between the Hungarian orders and the monarch was restored again, but change in the internal administration of the country could not be avoided. At first, reforms were highly supported even by the elite of the country. The reign of Maria Theresia and Joseph II is considered an era of rapid modernization. After the expulsion of the Ottomans and the defeat of Rakoczy's War of Independence, it was necessary to unify the different parts of the country, introduce unitary administration and modernize the Kingdom of Hungary. The ground of this modern state conglomerate was established at the Diet in 1722 and 1723. The most important interior office, the Hungarian Royal Locotential Council, was established. Courts of appeal were organized at four districts to make litigation easier. Furthermore, the National Committee was created for military supplies. The activities of the country, the cities, the counties and the guilds were controlled through the Locotential Council from Vienna. The noble titles were revised too. The repopulation of the abandoned parts of the country and fertilization of lands began. However, the Russian-Austrian-Turkish War, which took place in the sudden stretch of the border, the Austrian Succession War or the Seven Years' War lured away financial sources from the reconstruction. The 18th century is the period of enlightenment. The most important aim was the education of the people and the increasing of the welfare to raise the income of the country. In addition, 1765 can be considered a turning point for Hungarian enlightened absolutism. After the death of her husband, Emperor Franz von Lotharingen, Queen Maria Theresia nominated his son, Joseph II, for co-ruler in the Austrian and Hungarian part of the empire. This deed of appointment, dated 17th of September, and forwarded to the Locotential Council on the 21st of September in 1765, opened a new era. The co-ruler prince took part ex officio in the conferences, however, he could not issue any orders independently. Nevertheless, his views and influence can be observed on some orders. In the same year, the Diet of 1764 and 65 ended, however, it did not bring any reforms because of the resistance of the Hungarian orders. Afterwards, Diets were not summoned for a long time, because after Palatine Lajos Batyányi's death in 1765, his successor was appointed as a procurator, but he would probably have never been elected by a new election of orders. The Queen and her co-ruler could govern the country directly with edicts without the resistance of the Hungarian orders. The procurator Prince Albert of Saxony, Duke of Teschen, followed their decisions. In the era of co-regency, important instructions were born, which improved the wealth and the living standards of the country. In 1777, educational decree Ratio Educationis was issued, thereby education was directed under state control and maintenance, public education was ordered. The financial basis of education was provided by Fundus Studiorum, or the Study Fund, established in 1780. Significant regulations were made in the area of healthcare as well. In 1770, a health order was released which uniformed the activities of doctors, surgeons, pharmacists and midwives, but also introduced a unified procedure in the field of epidemiology. In 1769, forest regulations were issued and forests were taken under state protection. Since the Hungarian nobility did not pay taxes, the purpose of the Uberial Patent of 1767 was to protect taxpayer peasants and to prevent the imposition of exorbitant taxes. After the surveys between 1767 and 1774, charges were introduced proportional to the fertility of the properties and the services to the landlords were uniformed. The co-regent Joseph II was prepared to rule in practice. From 1766 he travelled the provinces and countries of the Habsburg Empire regularly. He wanted to see everything in its natural state. He became familiar with the local conditions and regulations, so his orders released as a monarch between 1780 and 1790 were meant to improve them. On the other hand, he aimed to achieve the common good, however, the addicts fundamentally changed the life of provinces. The Addict of Tolerance of 1781 not only granted the religious freedom of Protestants and Orthodoxes, but also allowed them to take office. Some talented Protestants could enter public service, such as Shamwe Teleki and Ferenc Kazinci. His serfdom patent of 1785 abolished the serf expression and discontinued bounding the peasants to land. After that, peasants could independently choose marriage partners, pursue career choices and move between estates. Joseph II tried to create a unified empire with his orders. Therefore, he reformed the administration, promoted the compulsory use of the German language in offices, 
and wanted to set up a central archive. The first census of population served the appraisal of the economic and financial sources of Hungary. Due to the regulations issued in the second half of the 18th century, a modern state apparatus was formed, in which experts and educated officials worked. Because of their meaningful works, gentry employees could be often honoured by title of count or baron, and they could run brilliant official careers like Gyurcs Fekete or Anta Grasakovic, the builder of the castles of Pozsony and Gödöllő. András Hadik stands out among the soldiers. He started his career as an ensign, but before his death he was the leader of Hofkriegsrat, the court of war council in Vienna, which was the most important military organ of the empire. Berlin Raid was one of the well-known actions of Count Hadik in the Seven Years' War in 1757. Hadik served several civic functions as well. Between 1764 and 1767, he was the chief military commander of Transylvania and the royal commissioner of Gubernium. From 1772, he served as the chief military commander of Galicia and after 1774, Hadik was the civil governor of his province. 